Okay, in this video we want to start looking at the notion of a ring, and so we'll start with the definition and some examples. So, a set R together with two operations, which we generally call addition and multiplication, although, uh, you know, those may be generalized later. So that is called a ring if we have three things satisfied. R with plus is an abelian group, and so what that tells us is that it's commutative with this one operation addition. We have an identity and we have inverses. We generally call the identity in this, in this case zero. I haven't written it here though, but generally the additive identity is called zero. And then we have associativity for the multiplication. So in other words, if we do AB times C, that's the same thing as A times BC. Okay, good, and that's for all A, B, C, and R. And then these two statements are also true for all A, B, and C, and R. And these are distributive properties. So if we do A times the quantity B plus C, it's exactly what you would want it to be, A, B plus A, C. And then if we do it in this order, A plus B quantity times C, it's gonna be A, C plus B, C. And so let's maybe real quick notice what are we missing that we would maybe like to have. And there are three main things that we're missing that we would maybe kind of like to have. And that would be, uh, the first one would be an identity for the multiplication. And it's true, uh, sometimes we will have an identity for multiplication, and that'll be a special type of ring, but we don't need that for the structure to be called a ring. And then uh, something that goes along with the identity for multiplication is inverses. And I'll say inverses with respect to this multiplication. So that might be something we also want to have. And what we will see is that we can't have inverses for every element. There's a special element which will never have an inverse, which we'll see later. Um, but uh, sometimes we will have inverses for everything except for that element. And then maybe one other thing that we would like to have would be commutativity uh, for the multiplication operation. So in order to be a ring, we do not need commutativity for the multiplication operation, but we will often have it. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we will look at some examples. So the first example that I would like to look at is the integers. And let's notice some things about the integers. So I should say what the operations are. The operations are normal addition and normal multiplication. Um, so now notice here we have an identity. And whenever I say identity, I mean multiplicative identity because we always have an additive identity, which is zero. And the multiplicative identity here is one. So we in fact do have a multiplicative identity. Um, we also have uh, the multiplication is commutative. And generally, if it's commutative, we call it a commutative ring. So the addition is always commutative. So whenever we're talking about the commutativity of a ring, it's always with respect to the multiplication. And that's true because we just have numbers here. But um, lots of stuff does not have an inverse. In fact, plus and minus one are uh, the only uh, integers with inverses. And what I should say here is, uh, again, that's with respect to multiplication because everything's gonna have an additive in inverse. So notice one is its own inverse, that's true because it's the identity, and negative one is its own inverse, and that's because negative one times negative one is positive one. But everything else doesn't have an inverse. Notice the inverse of two is one half, but that's outside of the integers. Okay, good. So uh, now let's go from there and uh, let's uh, say maybe 2z. So that's going to be a substructure of z. And notice that we get some of these but not all of these. So notice there's going to be no identity in this case. That's because we took away the number one. Notice here everything is even. We just have zero, plus minus two, plus minus four, plus minus six, and so on and so forth. We do have commutativity. So it is commutative. Um, but then nothing 
has um, an inverse. So that's our setup for 2z. Okay, so now let's uh, look at another thing. Let's maybe look at zn, okay? So in other words, we have the integers modulo n, we have multiplication uh, modulo n and addition modulo n. So we do have an identity in this case, and that is the equivalence class of one mod n. Um, we do have commutativity, And then some stuff has inverses. And from what we know about group theory, everything that's relatively prime has an inverse. So we'll say that uh, M inverse uh, in Zn exists uh, if and only if the GCD of M and N equals one. In other words, M is in UN, the group of units modulo N. So we'll look at uh, this ring a lot more carefully later, but just as a brief overview, that's what we get for ZN. Okay, so let's look at another one, maybe uh, M uh, N by N, and then maybe we could go over any ring, but uh, what I wanna do is maybe just over the complex numbers or the real numbers if you're, um, more familiar with the real numbers or the rational numbers. And then we have matrix addition and matrix multiplication. Okay, so we have an identity here. And that identity is going to be uh, the n by n identity matrix. So I'll just call that thing i n. Okay, and then uh, not commutative. So it's well known from linear algebra that matrix multiplication does not commute. But then a bunch of things do have multiplicative inverses. And uh, let's say it like this. So A inverse exists um, if and only if the determinant of A is not equal to zero. Um, and then by the invertible matrix theorem, which is something you learn in uh, linear algebra, there are lots of ways to say if A inverse exists or not. Okay, so I want to look at one more before the end of this video, and that would maybe be uh, Z adjoin X. Okay, so what that's going to be is that's going, going to be uh, all polynomials with integer coefficients. So this is going to be a0 plus a1x plus a n x to the n. And here I should say that n is bigger than or equal to 0, and these a i's are in z. And really, you can take this to be any ring uh, here. So any ring adjoin X is also um, a new ring. So this is a nice way of taking an old ring and forming a new ring just by looking at polynomials with coefficients in that old ring. Um, and I guess I should say that here, the identity is one again. The multiplication is commutative. And then these are going to be the only things that have inverses. So I won't check that, but that's like easy to check that those are the only things that have inverses. Nothing that is a polynomial of a higher degree will have an inverse. Okay, so I think this is a good place to end this video. In uh, the next video, we'll look at a bunch of different definitions for types of rings.